hey, um, as I was preparing, I just want to reiterate, thank you um, for letting me be able to preach to you all. It really is an honor and privilege. Uh, I don't take it lightly. I, I enjoy it. And, uh, and you guys don't have to allow it. Does anyone preach you? And don't allow it anyone to preach to you, okay? Because some people that want to preach to you aren't preaching the Word of God. Well, uh, thank you. I really do appreciate it. You listening to me hanging out with your boy for a bit. The title of the message is, is Children of the Lesser God. Show me, how many of you remember that movie? Remember the movie? So, those of you ain't came, my wife last week, uh, I, I told you all, I grew up in North Dakota, so she said, she, she said I'm a white boy, that's what she said. <laughs> Sarah said, I said, Sarah, where's your title? Life through the Spirit. What are you doing? She 
So that's the message to the Bible. No, okay, all right. <laughs> so we'll keep, we'll keep. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. We're going we're to work through Romans 8. Uh, now I'm going to have you jumping around a little bit, but to ease that pain, we have some volunteers in the audience who have uh, been drafted to help. They didn't really have a choice. Um, let me apologize for my voice. Uh, you guys can hear that reference. I lost my voice, which really happened. I'm a screamer. I think it was at my daughter's game. I was screaming too much. And, uh, so I lost my voice. It sounds kind of rough. I apologize. I try not to be too. I won't go too long. How about that? That we all have to hear. <laughs> If you will turn your Bibles or whatever electronic equipment you have to Romans chapter 8, I am going to look at verses 6 through 11. It's not on your mind. Romans chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. When you get there, can you say amen? Amen. Romans chapter 8, we're going to read verses 6 through 11. And it says this. Amen. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. I want to talk briefly on two principles. There is the principle of sin and death, and there's also the principle of life. Okay, the life, spirit of the, the, the principle of the Spirit. Uh, Shanika and I were having a conversation one night. Tony, you know, you'll appreciate it. Well, we were saying, how is it that, uh, I think we were talking about Lil Wayne. But like, how, how is it that these guys, they, they come out of nothing, right? And, and all of a sudden, the next day you turn around, um, they're doing it. They're big. They're all over the screen. And, and, and Shanika said this. She said, this is what God honors, whether, whether you're with him or not. God honors the words that come out of your mouth. Okay? Here's the point. When God, Lord, created earth, it said he looked out into void, darkness, okay? There was nothing. And then he began to speak. And when God spoke, he created things. So you have these rappers in the street, and I say, who they come out and say, I'm the best rapper alive. I'm the best. Muhammad Ali, greatest of all time. He was the goat, right? He has a quote that says, I hated trading, but I sacrificed now so that I could be the champ for the rest of my life. Right? There was this, and, and Muhammad Ali, you know, at the age of 19, 21, he was so brave, you know, people didn't like him. Mainstream mm -hmm. did not stand him. But he kept saying, I'm the greatest, I'm the bad. He kept speaking it. So much so that today we say, he's the greatest, he's the bad. <laughs> Little Wayne, he said, I'm going to be the best rapper. He's the best rapper alive. <laughs> there may be some debate with that. <laughs> 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 uh, there may be some Anyway, you have these people, Jackie. That don't know God if he showed up and smacked them in the face, but they've been exercising these principles. And the principles are, if you speak it, you literally may be able to, can, speak it into existence. Okay? Just the same way that God, seeing nothing, spoke creation. Okay? Example. Rick comes to my house. No, 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 not yet. Not fearful yet. I'm just ready. I like it. Rick comes to my house. Rick, Rick, Rick Morrow can fix anything. Then everything breaks to my house. I gotta take that back. 
Uh, but when Rick comes, he doesn't just show up and say, hey, I'm Rick, I'm here. He has this bag that he, that he, that he has, one of it. He has this bag that he has. And in that bag are tools, okay? So Rick doesn't just show up and say, hey, I'm here, and it's fixed. He doesn't lay hands on it, actually. He actually breaks down tools and does something, right? And I don't know what he does. And I don't know a screwdriver for him or whatever. I just know call Rick, right? So here Rick is with something in his hand to create something, Leroy. Okay? Unlike uh, us, or for them, for me, when I build something, I have something that I'm using. But Ray, when God builds something, he needs nothing. Okay? Do this for me real quick, thanks. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't be looking at me. Close your eyes. I ain't clapping. Not me. Close your eyes, Lord. I'm looking at me. Close your eyes. Don't be your person. No, I'm just <laughs> God works with exactly what you see. Amen? Exactly what you see, God said, let's begin. So God doesn't need anything. I'll put over your eyes. I didn't, I didn't get too many of your verses. I tried. <laughs> God doesn't need much to do what he needs to do. In fact, he probably prefers, he probably prefers telling that we not get in his way. Right? But there's been sometimes in my life, Lisa, if I'm being honest, and let's be honest, there's sometimes I am a child of a lesser God. Okay? And, and, and children of lesser gods are full of things. Alright? And we're going to go through examples where they're full of iron. Let's, let's take it to the first one. They are fearful. Amen? Who's that fearful for? Can we read it? For the spirit God gave us not made us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Amen, amen. Power, love, and sound mind. But if I'm being honest, Joe, sometimes I'm fearful. Sometimes I'm afraid. When, when God speaks to me, and I know it's God, and, and, and usually when it's God speaking to you, He's telling you to do something that everybody else ain't doing. That's really how you know it's God. Because everybody else ain't all bored. People are going to look at you when you step out and do it and call you a fool. You're going to help that child and the mom's going to come the next day and curse you out. So children of a lesser God get fearful. I don't know where Sarah got these images. The girl is good. <laughs> fearful. Crazy. I would be fearful. And sometimes, Markeisha, I am. Sometimes I'm afraid. <laughs> Children of the lesser God are full. They're fearful. What else do we have? What are they also full of? Oh, uh, boy. I look like you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows you have it in the last one. <laughs> 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 Every word you say is with a 
children of a lesser God are slothful. They don't want to take care of responsibilities. <coughs> Men, we'd rather be sleep than hear what's on our wife's mind, or what's on their heart. Amen. Ooh, boy. Amen. We'd rather uh, be watching, like I said, ESPN, rather than listening to our kids, helping our kids. Young adults, you'd rather be texting, tweeting, Instagramming, and Facebooking, and YouTubing, and I don't know what y'all do. Who has slothful? Will you read slothful for me? The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The hand of the diligent will rule while it says... The slothful shall be under tribute. The slothful will be put to forced labor. They will be enslaved. The slothful will be enslaved. Excuse me. Yesterday I went to Lionel Lakes. While in Lionel Lakes, it's a, it's a jail, a correctional facility, where Lionel Lakes brought 30, about 20, 20 young men who are very, very intelligent. These guys are the cream of the crop, all from various schools. One guy broke out and started speaking Mandarin one day. He blew us all away. Uh, and it's this right to passage program we're in. So we brought these brothers in, uh, come to find out there with L.C. at the door greeting us. L.C. has worked for the Department of Corrections for 30 years, 33 years, L.C., 31, something. And, uh, and he was talking to us. And I ran on that brother. Um, but trust me, the men that L.C. sees coming back and forth through those doors, I would venture to say they're not as diligent, maybe slothful. I am sometimes slothful. I really got to work on that. Y'all got to hold me accountable, okay? I got to give some men. You heard that, John? Who's John? Steve? John? John, John. Wherever he is, y'all tell me to hold me accountable. That's my boy. What else are they uh, full of? Fire. Deceitful. Yeah. Deceitful. Whenever you find yourself. Uh, <laughs> Having to turn down the value on the phone. Having to delete a, a text message you just sent. Having to step outside and take a call. Don't worry, I'm going to get to where you live in a minute. <laughs> Hurry up and take out the trash before anyone gets home. Brush your teeth. Maybe even shower. I don't know. Deceitful. Children of a lesser God are deceitful. Read to me Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart of the people of all things and beyond pure. Who can understand? You can understand. I love, I love what people say. They'll say, they'll say, oh, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. And I, and I know when they say that, like, they don't know nothing about the Bible. They don't know a thing about the Bible. Because this is what the Word of God says about your heart. It says that the heart is deceitful above all things. And it is beyond cure. Jesus knows my heart. He does. And that's why he's placed you in a place like this. So people with some bad breath could pull you aside and say, Stop it. And not say, Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I hope you're texting me right now because I haven't got it yet. Aurora, I hope you're texting me too because I have not got it yet. <coughs> and if anyone else is doing what they're doing, I have not got it yet. So make sure your message is reach me. Amen. Whoever says, God knows my heart, you're fooling yourself. God does know your heart. And he knows that children of a lesser God are this. They are deceitful. Is it okay that I'm walking back forward? Is that no, okay? All right, all right. All right. I thought I saw a look and I thought maybe it's my walk back. <laughs> Their eyes were crossed, so I thought they were You know, having an aside, when you, you all will see me sometimes when I get out to speak, I'm just over to a corner or I'm doing stupid stuff. This is me, and I'm just trying to focus right quick. It's not. Jesus, nothing holy, I'm just being quiet, get my mind right. So, if I did fail to hold something, I didn't mean to ignore you, I'm just trying to get my mind right. 
children of the lesser God are full of whenever you say God knows your heart, uh, we need to check that. Because yes, God knows you know your heart, and your heart, brothers and sisters, is not good. Okay. Uh, what else are people, the children of the lesser God? They're just awful. They're just awful. And not awful in the sense that they've done something that is awful. They're just miserable. Can't be happy just because they, because they woke up that day. They're just awful, miserable. I don't have a verse for it. But they're just full of that. Children of the God are full of that. They're awful. They, they, they got to mess you up, right? Bring you down. The guy who was said, this, this, this guy tried to take me off my square. Don't let him take you off your square. You know? Um, the children of the lesser God are awful, so their only intent is to have company with them, right? Bring someone home to If I got to be here, somebody got to be in here with you. So look at this. Going back to the movie Children of the Lesser God, we put that on the screen, Mark. Children of the Lesser God, that title page. In the movie, Marley Madden, there's one time that she speaks. And this is what she said uh, in, the, in the movie. She says, here you go. Hear my words. Hear my voice. Oh, you want more than that? I'm going to scream. The only time she spoke to the film, she got the girl got lost. She was working with hands. Yesterday I was trying to do the hands to she make it. She told me to stop. Uh, my wife has a degree from the University of Texas. And I'm going to get this wrong. Audiology. Um, she applied several times to uh, Gallaudet University. Gallaudet is the largest uh, hearing impaired and deaf school. Um, she, at one point, knew how to sign a little bit. Um, and so, so I'm trying to find her last night. She's like, would you stop? I don't know what you're saying. Um, I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just <laughs> I tried it yesterday and it was not good. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Turn with me to Romans, back to chapter 8, remember verse 19. And I'm going to get you guys out of here, okay? Is everyone okay? Yeah. All right, all right. I just got to know. If y'all want to go, if y'all want to go back to the past, you just have the decency to let me know first. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got to find it. I'm a down low. We're going to tell it. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, I'm at verse where am I? Verse 19? Verse 19 through 21. When you get there, say amen. 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 Uh, when Kim gets in, have Kim give me some background music. I like that. Uh, yeah, I need some background music. Give me something. But we're not going to land in that, so be careful because y'all may be up there for a minute. Look at this. What did I say, verse 19? Yes. Yeah. All right, look. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revelation of the sons of God. Am I in the right place? Amen. All right, go to 20. This is what I really want. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Let me unpack that because that's a lot. If you guys go to Romans chapter 8, you could be there for years. It's so much. And I, and I haven't got it all, Rabbi, so I'm, I'm unpacking this, at, 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 not as we go, but throughout my life I'm going to have to work this out. For the creation, God gave his son, that was the creation. And he subjected that creation to futility. He said, go down there and be an example to them, right? And he didn't do it willingly, but he did it because of who subjected it. He did it in hope, in hope that you could be an example to the rest of the world, okay? And so I switched from the principle of, of sin and flesh, and now I'm dealing with the principle of the spirit, the principle of life. All right? And this is where this is where I'm at. And it says in hope, verse 21, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Understand, I didn't say there, the Bible didn't say children of a lesser God. They said children of God. Yeah. So it says that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage and obtain freedom of glory of the children of God. We are to obtain a freedom. And that freedom is to show that it is truly 
the glory of God, to show that we are children of God. Okay? We're not children of a lesser God. We're children of God. Go to verse 28. Uh, Mayor Marley Matlin, she screams, you'll hear my voice. And, and, and this is what we need to scream. I believe that this is what we need to be saying. Verse 28 reads, and when we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. <clears throat> if you are a child of the God that I serve, Byron, there, there, there's going to be a mark on your life. There's going to be a, a certain a, a way in which you deal with people, a certain way in, in what you and how you conduct your affairs. Yeah. It's not enough, uh, beloved, just to be called. Yeah. Right? The Bible says you have to be called according to his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Alright? I, I love when we sing uh, come as you are. Uh -huh. and, and a lot of people who are children of a lesser God, they say, well, I'm just coming as I am. God's just going to do it. When you get here as you are, and as the closer you move to God's presence, trust me, you will not remain the same. Okay? Because God is that so, so powerful that when you're in His presence, you have to change. You have to conform, transform. You have to be renewed. Or otherwise, you don't stay in God's presence. Someone say amen. Amen. Call according to his purpose. We get called and we show up and we think that is all. We need to learn God's purpose for our life and follow it. The Bible says call according to his purpose. It's not enough just to be called. It says that uh, purpose, this is purpose defined in the dictionary. An object or an end to attain, attain, with an A, attain. It is an end. I have a purpose. There is an end in which I have to attain. There is something that God has put us on the earth to go after, to pursue, to finish. It also says that God foreknew us, foreknow. God had previous knowledge of us. So whenever you find yourself getting into fearfulness, getting into deceitfulness, you need to know that you're not a child of the lesser God. You're a child of the God. And God already knew. He had previous knowledge, okay, of the struggle that you might go through. Or the matter was settled beforehand. So when you walk in life, in the principle of the Spirit of God, you need to know that this is predestined. The matter's already settled. I'm just going through it because I have to. But in the end, it's already settled. Y'all stay with me. Don't, don't fall on me yet. <coughs> Justify. It is defined as to prove or show to be just or right. As I land this plane, uh, choir, let me have y'all get to the stage so we can be ready and move quick. Justify. To prove or to show to be just or right. And lastly, saints, it says glorify. Glorify. Glorify defined says to cause to be or seem to be better than the actual condition. When John Cook, uh, ladies and gentlemen, got into the school he is now a principal of, I told you that there were certain things going on. Certain things that uh, were beyond his control. But uh, with his diligence, with his prayer, you all, he has instituted a culture. The man with the presence of God has been able to change a culture. Last week he appeared on the news. Yep. All of the test ratings 
the truancy ratings. Truancy ratings are down. And it wasn't because John is so great what she is. Amen. But it was because of the presence of God. Amen. It was because he knew that he was predestined. Sorry, John. He was called. He knew that just being called was not enough, but he was all justified, also justified. And those whom he, God, justified, he also glorified. That means it doesn't seem what it actually is. I could be in hell right now. I could have not have paid my mortgage in three months. <laughs> Children of a lesser 